LM12 would like to know, could Moonwalkers Conrad and Bean have seen the command module Yankee Clipper fly overhead from the lunar surface, and did they? Well, they should have been able to if they were if they were looking for it. Uh, the sun would be shining and reflecting off of the uh, off the command module. Uh, I'm sure if they intended to look for it and find it, they would have seen it. I do not really know whether they did or not. Uh, I don't. I don't recall them making comments uh, regarding that. They could have. I just. I simply don't remember. What would you like to see done in? future American space efforts, and where do you think NASA's priorities should lie? Oh, boy. Well, from where we are today, almost anything. Uh, Constellation, uh, the canceled program, I understand that the uh, spacecraft is uh, still being worked on, still being developed uh, at some pace. What I would look for, I think the big requirement right now is a heavy lift booster. We don't have anything capable of getting uh, large payloads into space, even near Earth orbit. Uh, that, to me, would be a priority. Uh, we have no access to space at the present time except through Russia, and I think that, uh, that tells us a lot about America, and I'm very sad to even have to say that. Facts are facts, and uh, one day we cannot, let me put it this way, we cannot lose our preeminence in space. I feel this way. Once we've lost it, we'll probably never regain it again. And I don't think, as a sovereign country, we can afford to do that. What do you think is needed to get America's attention back into space so that we have the enthusiasm that we had during the Mercury Apollo era David would like to know? A goal. We need a goal. We're goal-oriented people. Uh, we love to be challenged. Uh, the space program, the, the Apollo program in particular, uh, was a challenge. It was a goal that President Kennedy uh, gave to the American people that we would uh, go to the moon and, and obviously land and return there. And, and that was our goal. And it only took a little over eight years to accomplish that after he said it. But the enthusiasm, Obtaining uh, the goal aspects of it was an was a impetus that gave us the momentum to further our educational abilities in science and math, and we're lacking that today. We just look at the scores compared to other countries. We need to revitalize uh, that aspect of our, our educational system, and a goal-oriented goal space program will provide that. What was a useful bit of advice that the crew of Apollo 11 told you after their mission that hadn't come up during training? Well, I think the big thing, uh, whether they told us that directly or not, and I can't remember whether they did, uh, was the simple fact that Neil landed beyond his intended landing point for, for various reasons, navigational reasons, as well as his desire to extend his flight path to avoid a, a significant boulder field, but future flights uh, would, would be required to land precisely uh, alongside mountains, uh, alongside valleys, rills, if you will. So our mission was uh, given that task of uh, landing on the rim of the crater that contained the Surveyor 3 spacecraft. And uh, from that accomplishment, uh, later on flights were able to land precisely where they intended to, to land. A friend on Collect Space wants to know, do you remember the circumstances when you first met Pink Conrad and Alan Bean? Oh, I think I can come close to it. Uh, I was finishing up uh, my tour as a test pilot at Patuxent River, Maryland in flight tests uh, in probably the late 59 time frame, early 60s. And uh, Pete was an instructor at test pilot school, and of course flight tests had the newest and greatest of, uh, of naval aircraft, and he was always calling up and begging me to, uh, to fly one of my airplanes. Uh, so I got to know him through that circumstances. And uh, later on, we both joined the same squadron, uh, were roommates uh, on the USS Ranger, and got to know each other very well. Alan, uh, Albane was uh, a student of Pete's 
while, while Pete was an instructor at flight school, excuse me, at the test pilot school, and uh, that's where they first became acquainted. I didn't know Al until we were in the second selection group in uh, 1962. Uh, we both failed for selection, and then we both were once again in the third group and, and selected. So. I knew Al then, but didn't know him in a professional manner in which we trained together. Pete and I had flown together in the Navy, uh, we flew Gemini 11 together, so uh, we knew each other very, very well, and it wasn't until we started training with Al after C.C. Williams was killed in an airplane accident, who was our third crew member, and then Al replaced him, so my acquaintance with Al was basically during the uh, the training as a backup crew of Apollo 9. Neil McRae, our Facebook friend, would like to know, what do you think of the HBO series From the Earth to the Moon? Were they pretty accurate? I think they were pretty accurate. Uh, of course, I would pay the most attention to Apollo 12. And uh, I think HBO, Tom Hanks, uh, Dave Scott, as a uh, technical advisor, uh, captured the essence if there is an essence between three guys. But I think they captured uh, our relationship and the camaraderie and the feelings we had for each other and uh, the, the, the fun we had. I, I, I hope, I'd like to think that that came through because we did, we had a, we had a great amount of fun, a great respect for each other and uh, I think we did a pretty reasonable job as professionals. LM12 would like to know, what's the most impressive lunar surface feature that you observed during your time in lunar orbit? Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Uh, Apollo 12 flew an equatorial orbit around the moon, a very narrow band of plus or minus 10 degrees maybe uh, around the equator, so we didn't get to see much of the uh, geology or geometry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, north or south of, of the equator, but in the western portion of, of the orbit was uh, over the landing site and just to the north of the Apollo 12 landing site was a crater Copernicus, which was startling in appearance, very sharp, very well defined, and uh, it, it was a great, great feature to look at. And incidentally, uh, Copernicus could have been or might have been a uh, landing site for for future missions, which never took place, but it, that feature uh, I remember to this day. This has been Astro Chat with Jiminy and Apollo astronaut Dick Gordon.